and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. My name is Marcia and today I bring you another episode in the serverless series. Let's get started with it. In the previous episode we have been working with this uh, Meetup calendar creator. If you remember we were, we were passing one parameter from the URL and with the name of the Meetup. We're finding that meetup using the meetup API. We were creating one iCal and then we we're saving it in some storage there. But we cannot really do anything with that iCal if it's stored in like local storage of the Lambda because that's going to get destroyed eventually. So that's not the best place to store anything. So in this episode I want to talk a little bit about storage and if we are using Amazon services, definitely we want to use S3. So what is S3? It comes from the free S's in Simple Storage Service. Very original. AWS used for storage anything. Uh, you can store your logs, you can store your database backups, you can store lots of stuff there. And also you can store files and any kind of files. And buckets are like containers of files, create buckets, and in those buckets it's like you can organize the content you have. They have a quite flat structure, so you cannot nest buckets, and you can create directories inside buckets, but that doesn't mean that there is a real data structure there. It's, the files will be just prefix with whatever path you have in that directory, so it's just a trick for your eyes. Uh, help humans to find the files easier, but for the machine it's bucket, and then file. Buckets are like containers of files and you can set permissions to them. You can also set permissions to files. S3 provides a really nice API where you can create buckets, remove buckets, update buckets, list all the files in the buckets. You can also uh, do the same with the files. You can the, add files, remove files. It's, it's very customized and it's very accessible from, from an API. So we will be using that in our example too. So what we will do today? The first thing we will do is we will create a bucket, we will set the permissions for it, and then we will modify our existing code in order to be able to write the iCal in the bucket that we decided. For doing that we will be using a library from Amazon that will allow us to just call this free component and save it there. Very simple, very straightforward. So we don't need to do any weird things. So let's get started. So the, as I mentioned, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to go and create the bucket. So for that, we are going to the Amazon console, S3. I already have a bucket with similar names, so I will create it with a one at the end because I'm too lazy to remove the other one. This is for, I've been testing these examples before making the video. So meetup event collector bucket one and yay. That's the name of our bucket, you can put the name you want. You have to remember that name, we will need it later. Uh, for the region, I usually try to use the same region as we are using in our lambdas and API gateways, because Amazon regions are an interesting t story per se, but it's hard to share resources between regions. So try to keep your API gateways, Amazon lambdas and S3, everything in the same region, just for sanity check. I will make another video on regions later. So now I discovered that it's like East US and we can use this US standard because there is nothing like Virginia there. That should do the trick. And now we name it again. Meetup event collector bucket one. We create it. Now we have it. Then we need to set the permissions in the bucket because now basically only me can do things there, but we want the the lambda to do it. So mm -hmm. we should set the permissions that mm -hmm. everybody can upload and delete and everybody can list. We are not very conservative with our permissions. We are granting a per everybody. That's not a good idea, so if you are doing this for a production thing, check the permissions and more detail about that. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to install our library in our node project. So the Amazon library that will allow us to do um, 
all the S3 axes. So now we have our dependencies and we just run the npm command to install that library and it's called AWS SDK and we just run that command and that should do the trick to add it to our package so JSON in our node project. We can go and check and there it is. So now we can use it in the next uh, file we are going to create. So now we are going to create this uh, file, I will call it S3 Saber, horrible name, but this is just a test code, so you can put whatever name you want. And this file will be the one that will uh, grab the file we create, this iCal, and will save it to S3. So we import that uh, library that we just add to our dependencies, and then we find the S3 component, and we also need the file uh, system component. Uh, and then we'll just save the calendar first. We are going to read the file from the local storage because we stored it in the previous step in our local storage. And then we will create this param event where we put the name of the bucket and the name of the file uh, and the name of the file we want to create. In our case, is meetup event collector bucket one. And the name of the file is uh, iCal generator iCal, and the body it will be the data that file that we just have from local storage. Next thing we're going to do is call this S3 upload, and we just upload with those parameters. The, the file is very straightforward. The next thing we need to do is to remove the file from the temporary storage of the Lambda. We are using this temp folder in the Lambda, and that's sometimes not very well managed in, in Lambda because when the instance says there should be a new brand instance, but they are not. Sometimes you get the old one with all the things in the temp folder, so you want a clean temp folder so things don't get confused. So always, if you put things in the temp, remember to remove them. We add in our index the call to our new function, the S3 saver, we can add the library. So before we were just saving it in somewhere in our local storage, not even in the temp folder, we're just throwing it, whatever the code was executing, so that was a very bad thing. Now we care, and we will save it in the temp folder, so then we can pick it up, and then we call the, the S3 saver. One thing we can do now is to create this local test file, so we can run this uh, S3 saver locally to make sure that everything is working fine, because it's not nice to deploy the Lambda and then figure out that, oh, damn, nothing is working. And so we can try it locally and everything should work fine. So we create this test local file that basically is just calling the, the whole method that is called in the handler.js, imagining that that was the Lambda calling it. But the only thing is that we pass a fixed parameter and we see if the iCal file is created in the... S3 bucket, we can check that. We can check that also because our bucket has permissions that everybody can upload. So in this case, that's a good, it's very easy. If we have more complicated permissions, then we will need to set up some permissions here. But as everybody can do it, this is kind of, it works. So now we can just do the deploy using serverless framework of that Lambda. Now we just remove that file so then when we execute we are sure certain that the file got uploaded because the name is the same for all. So now it's deployed and we can go to our REST client and, and try this thing out. We have our REST client, we have the API key, we have to set up the right one. And then we just check, calendar created. And we can go and check in the logs of the Lambda and also in the bucket if the file is there. And the file is there. And then we can go to the logs of the Lambda and also check that things were happening the way that we expected.
So yeah, there you can see the same logs that we were seeing in our local run. Everything is good. So this is on. So yeah, now you know how to save a file in S3 with a Lambda and you can do many many things with this. So this is a very powerful component. In the next videos we will see more things that you can do with AWS and on several less technologies. But for now this is it. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like it, share with your friends, give thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, follow my blog and I see you in the next episode. Ciao!